An archetype is uh, considered an original pattern from which other patterns or other more advanced type uh, uh, symbols are, are basically based, okay? So it's a model or an original form or a prototype of some kind. And uh, there's some basic symbolic archetypes. Of course, we have the circle, which represents infinity and eternity and perfection and the divine. The circle has always kind of been considered a shape that represents the divine. It's based on a number that cannot really be ever pinned down to exactitude, you know, pi, of course. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it's just a symbol that repre has represented perfection uh, throughout all different traditions in human history. Conversely, Firstly, the opposite of that, the square, is another archetype, and it's represented stability, but um, also rigidity and imperfection. And it's represented things that are that are earthbound, that are very earthly and, and human as opposed to, uh, you know, divinity like the circle represents. Uh, so then we have another archetype, the triangle. You know, we see this a lot in symbolism as well because it represents balance. It represents union or coming together of uh, often opposite extremes. It represents the intellect. It represents, uh, in many cases, knowledge. Uh, another archetype is the star, which represents spirit or sovereignty. And, you know, that's, of course, used in politics a lot. And we, there's many other archetypes that we could get into, but essentially archetypes resonate deeply with the human subconscious mind. Okay, that's the main thing to keep in mind. It's kind of, archetypes are kind of embedded almost into our, uh, very, the very fabric of our being, into what one might call our ancestral DNA, because these shapes and symbols have been around with us since humanity has been on this planet. Um, uh, the perverted use of symbolism and archetypes goes on constantly in our society. And again, since people are ignorant about how a lot of the symbolism works, it's uh, quite literally a quote-unquote piece of cake for these dark occultists to wield this knowledge in this way. So I want to give a brief example. Uh, Betty Crocker uh, uh, in the 1950s was uh, had designed a new instant cake mix, and they uh, didn't know how this was going to be received by American housewives, and so they did a lot of research and development on this product, and they put it out into the supermarkets. They got distribution for it, spent a whole lot of money to, to do all of that. And then the cake mix was very unpopular. It did not sell well at all. And there was an underlying reason for this, but Betty Crocker didn't understand that reason at the time. Okay. Well, I'll just give a little bit of a background. Um, they, they, this cake mix, all you needed to do was just add water to the supplied powder. And then, you know, you would bake that and you'd have an instant cake. In that day, that was considered somewhat of an amazing thing. And um, uh, unfortunately, housewives didn't go for it. They, you know, and families in general, they, they, did, they made kind of like a, um, uh, a statement that, that this isn't something that we're interested in by their purchase, by their lack of purchase. And Betty Crocker, instead of saying, well, you know, we've kind of received the mandate from the masses of people, they're not interested in this. Uh, they decided that they would make people want the cake mix. Now, just think about that for one moment, okay? We're not going to say, well, we tried our product and it didn't work and people gave us a mandate that they're not interested in it and that's their free will choice and decision. No, 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 that's not good enough for us as a, as a corporation. We are going to do research not only into why people didn't want it, but what we will have to do as a company to make them want this very product. We're not going to go back to the drawing board. We're not going to abandon the idea. We're going to keep this out, you know, on the shelves and basically say, what are we going to have to do to modify this slightly to make people want it? So they hired a Madison Avenue ad campaign firm to investigate the, uh, which was basically comprised of a lot of psychologists. And they asked this psychological think tank team to find out through psychoanalysis the underlying psychological reasons that housewives didn't want the cake mix. The conclusion of this type of think tank study that came out was that while the average housewife at that time in the 1950s appreciated the convenience of the cake mix, they were feeling a very particular type of emotion 
by sort of taking a shortcut or cutting corners, whereas they had originally made cakes for their family from scratch and put a lot of their energy and effort and love into it. So the emotion that they, those housewives were feeling was actually guilt. That was the result of the psychoanalysis done by this think tank of Madison Avenue uh, ad campaign uh, firm, uh, um, think tanks, and uh, psych psychologists, actually. So what they had to do was attempt to dis, uh, assuage that psychological guilt in those housewives. The way that they did that, very interestingly, was they simply added some words on the instructions on the box. Now, just think about that for one moment. How powerful would a few words on a box be to completely change the mindset of an entire group of people in society? But that's exactly what happened. And this cake mix sold eventually. The three words that they needed to add on the box, so the ad campaign uh, firm comprised of these psychologists told Betty Crocker, just keep the mix the way that it is and add on the instructions, add an egg, add one egg, where the three words need to be put on the box. When the housewives read the new instructions upon trying to find out how the cake mix work, worked before they bought it, um, that changed their mind. Now, most people will say, well, what sense does that make and how does that work? And therein lies what the occult actually is, what the knowledge of the occult is, which is what these psychologists applied. That's what we have to understand the occult is. It's deep, ancient, ancestral psychology that is being applied against people who have no idea about how it works. The egg is a symbolic archetype of feminine energy. It is the creative essence of the female that combines with the sperm to create life. It is the feminine fertility symbol. Mm. So that is what they were putting in the mind of the house housewife. Now you take what we've given you in the cake mix, the, the instant cake mix that's very easy to prepare, okay? And after you have that, you add an egg to the cake mix. So now symbolically, virtually, through proxy, you are giving your feminine creative essence into the project. And in doing that, that... Th those housewives are now assuaging that guilt that they previously felt by not putting enough of, quote unquote, themselves into this undertaking for their family to make this cake. In adding the egg, that psychologically assuaged that guilt subconsciously without those women ever even understanding what had been done it, through the back door psychologically to them. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what the occult actually is. The cake mix sold like wildfire after they only changed the instructions on the box to add a symbolic archetype to assuage that psychological guilt subconsciously. Wow. Now, if that's not, I mean, a powerful enough example, I don't know what is. This is what people have to begin to understand that occult knowledge is and what it can do and how it can be applied in a perverted way in society to act as sort of a weapon against people that don't understand how it works.